Good morning, guys. It's bright and early on Sunday, September the 18th of 2022. I am out this morning because it is my fertilizing day. I decided to come out early this morning to get my plants for the that I have set out in the garden for the fall and the winter. Get them fertilized, get them growing strong, a healthy start before it gets too hot in the day and then we go in for our church service. And then this evening or afternoon, I will be working part at my part-time job. Yes, I have a part-time job. Why? I don't know, but it's just a way for me to uh, get some extra money for my garden things as well as pay my tuition at Winthrop University as well as help take care of my family. I do work full time. I have children who are involved in sports. I have grandchildren. I have a daughter. So I have a lot of go a lot going on, excuse me. And yep, I went and got a part-time job in addition to all of that. But today is my fertilizing day. I set this time out so that I can get out fertilized before it gets too hot give my plants the fish fertilizer along with some other things to help them bloom nice and big and give me a bountiful and plentiful harvest. We're going to check on some crops today that I've direct seeded into the garden, see how they're doing, and then we're going to get started on fertilizing the beds. I'll take you guys through that process. Join me, City Girl Gardening. Right, guys we are here at the peppers bed these are my last three pepper plants that I have here that I planted in the spring and the fall as you can see my peppers are still doing exceptionally well they are still producing um, bell peppers here I have been wanting to just go ahead and get them pulled up get these plants pulled up but because they are still producing uh, peppers I'm still getting a lot of peppers growing on this tree, on these trees, on these plants. Um, I've decided to just let them go ahead and stay a little bit longer. Um, so I haven't pulled them up to put anything in this bed because I stated I still have growth. I still have peppers coming in. Uh, this pepper plant, uh, these bell peppers and peppers are the plants that my mom, she comes in. Um, during the week and she pulls from to cook peppers she likes cooking uh bell peppers and peppers and onions in her foods and so this is where she comes to get her peppers so since they are still producing i pull from it for peppers for our salad and for cooking as well so i'm just going to go ahead and let them stay uh for time being um in this bed i did several different varieties of bok choy I direct seeded them. It has gotten cooler temperatures during the night, which the bok choy love. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of growth. I did the tiny bok choy. I did the milk, which is a, the top, which, well, there's different varieties of them, but I did a tiny bok choy. Then I did a small size variety of bok choy. And then I did a big size of bok choy. In the middle here of the bok choy, you can see I have planted some carrots. These are what the bok choy look like. And then this is a carrot. These are carrot tops that are coming up. I planted those because those are companion crops. They will grow well together. As the carrots in the middle, they will grow down root under the ground and then the bok choy will grow above the ground. And again, I stated they are companion plants and they will grow very well together. We're going to take a walk over here to my squash. And as you can see, I have my yellow squash here on the end. I have some custard squash. I have some golden egg squash. This golden egg has started to flower. So hopefully I'll get some bees or some bugs in to go ahead and uh, pollinate that flower. Well, let's see. Nope. I don't have any female flowers yet. So, um, but I hope to get these squash over here uh, pollinated. 
um, I do have some more yellow squash, more yellow squash. These are my, this is my third succession of um, squash that I did plant here along the fence line. So I'm going to get those fertilized as well. You can see my rosemary. This is rosemary here. My rosemary, it is starting to grow some little flowers here on it. Let me make sure this is my rosemary. Yep, that's my rosemary plant. I sometimes get that in the lavender uh, mixed up, but once I smell it, I can kind of tell which one is which. But this is my rosemary. Here is my spearmint. Here is my peppermint. I put two plants down in here and they are running and multiplying and spreading. I did put down here some, uh, I think it's two cabbage and a collard green. And then over here I have cabbage and I have a few little spinach. I have some German thyme and Italian oregano. German thyme is over here. And then coming on down again to this herb, these herb planters, I have my chamomile here. Here I have my pineapple sage. And this is my lavender plant here. I did cut a good bit of the lavender out. Um, I used that in the garden to kind of comb the chickens, get them nice and settled for uh, nesting and laying some eggs. Here in this bed, I have a marigold here. And then this marigold is here. And then down in these beds, I do have more collard greens. And I may have a broccoli or a Brussels sprout somewhere in there, but I think majority of them are collard greens. Um, and then in the middle here, this is some Greek oregano. Over in this bed, I did direct sow in this bed as well. And in this bed, I have on this end, these are turnips. These are the turnips. They'll give me the bulb on the bottom as well as the greens will grow on top. The bulbs will root down. And then in the middle here, these are radishes. These are radishes in the middle. And then again, on this end, I put more turnips to bulb down and then they grow the greens on top. And on the, in the back of the tra trellis and the back, the, excuse me, the back of the trellis in the bed here, I have more ra radishes that'll be growing. I did plant along the trellis so that they will trellis and grow up. I did put down some sugar daddy snap peas. So hopefully um, those will start to uh, germinate and grow up the vine up the trellis over here i have more broccoli i think i did broccoli here i did some cabbage i did collard greens here in this bed so we're going to get those fertilized as well over here i have broccoli cauliflower and i might have one or two collard greens in this bed but i do have over here some english thyme in this bed i always put the herbs somewhere in the bed with the brassicas because they do repel some of the bugs that like to eat on the leaves um of the broccoli cauliflower the greens the cabbage so hopefully that works for them i may plant another uh english thyme over in that part of the bed to kind of help out with the bugs and repel them over here on this side and then in this long bed, I did put down some more broccoli, some more collard greens, and some more cabbage in this bed. And I will fertilize this bed as well. Over here, you can see my corn stalk here. And then I do have some yellow squash, well, straight neck yellow squash here in this bed. I'm going to germinate that as well. Over here, I will have more corn stalks. I have some tricolored beans growing. And then my trellis here where I harvested a lot of the long um, asparagus or yard beans. I did go ahead and harvest a good bit of them. I may go ahead and pull those vines off of the trellis and put down some more seeds to grow another round of the long asparagus beans um, and harvest those before we have our first frost and it gets cold. In this back bed with the trellis, I have a zucchini here. I have a um, butternut squash here. I have a spaghetti squash here. They will grow and trellis up the 
um, they will vine and trellis up here. And then of course on this end, I do have another zucchini that I am going to fertilize this bed as well. And then of course over here, you see my sweet potato bed. And of course, you know, I had the holes in it from the bugs. Well, I did make up a concoction of natural uh, pesticide. And in that I did some uh, garlic, minced garlic. I cut up some onion, used some Dawn dish detergent with warm water. I let it sit and soak in over night for 24 hours and I sprayed down the um, plants out to kind of get some of the aphids off of it, the aphids off of it. And um, it seems to be doing pretty good. I'm gonna spray them again once I get it fertilized and get some of my uh, nutrients and stuff on this on the plants over here in this bed you can see some of the seeds that I sowed for my mustard greens I had some red mustard some giant red some giant green mustard and they're growing pretty good I do have some empty spots that I just may go ahead and put more mustard seeds in those places to kind of make it uh, a fuller bed get more production of greens and uh, mustard greens in this bed but this is a variety I'm gonna get started on uh, getting my fertilizer out getting um, the beds fertilized with my water soluble fertilizer you can see the girls are up this morning and you can see some of the fake eggs that I do have here in the nest with them but down here this is one of those white eggs I can tell the difference between the eggs but one of the white eggs in this one is a real egg and so I am going to get that egg out but all the other eggs are uh, fake eggs um, to get them trained so that they don't uh, get in the beds, poop in the beds and start um, lounging and stuff in the bed. And you can see here, they've knocked their food over again. I had filled it up, but I'm gonna fill it up again this morning and get them some more fresh water in. Um, once I get this thing, get all this stuff fertilized. Um, but join me as I get started on fertilizing the garden to get started with fertilizing um, my plants I have some Fox Farm soil fertilizer um, this is the grow big uh, liquid plant food it is a 644 and that's just basically the phosphorus the nitrogen um, that it needs um, it those numbers represent the phosphorus the nitrogen um, that the uh, plants need um, that they put the nutrients that they provide to the plant. So this is my grow big fox form fertilizer and then I am going to put in a drop of the fox form big bloom fertilizer and then I'm going to give my plants what they really love and this is fish fertilizer or fish emulsion. Uh, usually when my husband goes fishing or my and he and my brother I will take the fish water that's not bloody and too dirty I will take that water um, add clean water to it and then I would pour it throughout the beds to fertilize the plants they love them it gives them the nutrients that they need and they grow big and strong and they give a bountiful um, harvest so I am using this out all of my buckets that I've had I have put holes in them why I don't know uh, I use some of them for planters some of them for growing pots and that's most likely why so I don't have a bucket that does not have holes in it so I am going to use my big black pot here that uh, I used when I would water can uh, some of my um, canned goods and vegetables in the kitchen um, I bought two of these so one of them I'm going to keep in the kitchen and this one I'll probably end up using and making it for use out in the garden because once I bring something inside that we use in inside outside to use in the garden I leave it outside in the garden because my mind is just that it's gardeny it's dirty it's not clean to where I want to cook out of it anymore <laughs> even though I may clean it with soap and bleach and water I still just feel like it's just garden use now so I am going to end up leaving this out, but I'll use this as my fertilizer pot um, when I make up my solution and pour it over in the beds. So again, join me as I get started with fertilizing the beds.
All right, that first pot was for the herb beds. I went ahead and fertilized the planter beds first with the herbs in it. So now we're gonna get started with doing the garden raised beds. Uh, that was one pot down and about 15 more pots to go. Join me along the ride. Alright guys, that was the end of the fertilizing video. I have gotten all the beds that I wanted fertilized, fertilized. I left the two beds that I direct sowed the turnips, radishes, and the sugar daddy snap peas in. I left that one unfertilized because those are new seedlings and I want them to go ahead and grow up a little bit more before I do apply fertilizer to them. I did not fertilize my bok choy bed that is on the side of the house. I want them to grow up a little bit more before I start to fertilize them. Thanks for tuning in to my Sunday morning garden chores. Took you on a brief tour of what I have in the garden growing, what's going on around the garden, as well as you guys saw me and saw the products that I use when I fertilize my beds. I love the Farm Fox, excuse me, Fox Farm products as well as the fish fertilizer fish emulsion um, to fertilize my beds thank you guys for tuning in go to my youtube channel at city girl gardening 803 like share subscribe comment go to my facebook page city girl gardening with the pink logo that says city girl gardening in it and um like my page share some of my posts comment give me some feedback Again, I'm Dee, your City Girl Gardener, and thanks for tuning in.